Hi, this is Kirsten Bloom, Program on Human Rights and the Global Economy Fellow at the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty, bringing you my final video blog update from my time here in Geneva this week. And I should mention that I'm reporting to you from the Palais des Nations building in one of the assembly halls. And my hope is that I can give you an update of what I've been doing both yesterday afternoon and this morning, and some final thoughts on my time here in Geneva. So first, in lieu of the U.S. postponement of their review of compliance with the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights that was supposed to take place yesterday afternoon and this morning, the Human Rights Committee um, had time to fill because of that postponement, and so instead they did a review of the general comments to Article 9 of the ICCPR. So I should first mention that Article 9 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights um, is the right article that ensures the right to liberty and the right to security of person. And it also stipulates that no one shall be arbitrarily detained or arrested. So it was a really fascinating opportunity to sit in on the committee um, session as the committee members discussed different uh, meanings and different dialects that lead to different meanings in terms of words that are analysis to the article and the right to security of person and the right to liberty. And uh, it was just really interesting when thinking about the importance of um, maintaining an analysis that can be upheld across countries and with many different cultures and having a norm that is internationally applied. So it was a really great opportunity to see the committee members' commentary on those issues, and um, I really enjoyed the chance to get to hear their thoughts on details that turn out to be extremely important when creating international law norms. So also the session yesterday provided me with the opportunity during some breaks to have conversations with and introduce myself to a couple of committee members. In particular, I had the opportunity to introduce myself to uh, Mr. Walter Kalin, who is a Swiss humanitarian lawyer and a human rights and constitutional law expert. And I mentioned to Mr. Kalin that I'm from uh, the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty, and he instantly remembered being briefed on the issue of criminalization of homelessness and he remembered the shadow report that the law center put out called cruel inhuman and degrading and we discussed the human rights committee putting the issue of criminalization of homelessness on their list of issues for the u.s. to have to report on and that was particularly under article 2 and 26 as discrimination violations of the covenant and I also mentioned to him how important it is to also get recognition from the committee on the issue um, of criminalization of homelessness as it relates to violations of Article 7 of the ICCPR. So Article 7 stipulates that no one should be um, have to face cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment. And it parallels to U.S. Eighth Amendment constitutional language. And so I just mentioned briefly how important it would be for advocates to be able to be able back up uh, their Eighth Amendment arguments while defending or bringing cases for homeless people who are being cited or arrested for things like sleeping in public when there are no alternatives, shelter beds are full, uh, and housing funding has been increasingly cut. And that that support from international law could really um, make an influence in terms of those cases being brought um, that parallel the Eighth Amendment. So it was a privilege to get to speak with Mr. Kalin, and uh, I hope and look forward to conversations and advocacy efforts leading up to the U.S. hearing that will now take place in March of next year. And then I also had the chance to introduce myself to Mr. Gerald Newman, who is a Harvard Law professor and an expert on human rights law. He wrote uh, the main textbook for human rights law that's used in the U.S. and around the world. And um, he also writes numerous amicus briefs to the Supreme Court on cases that involve human rights. So Mr. Newman has recused himself from any of 
the issues or topics that involve the U.S. because of his involvement in the U.S. and that he's from there. And so I didn't get to talk too much about the actual issue of criminalization of homelessness, but I did introduce myself and um, tell him why I was in Geneva and also mention how much the Law Center admires his work on human rights law. So that's the last couple of days, and um, in the last, you know, today and yesterday, I had the opportunity to also think about what I've learned here in Geneva. And I think the biggest takeaway take I've had is how important international law can be and how much of a tool it can be in terms of uh, domestic advocacy efforts and in collaborating across the board on issues such as criminalization of homelessness. So if I've ever believed um, bits of skepticism that I've heard about how international law is relevant in the U.S. and it, for local jurisdictions, um, I now feel like I've really seen tangible ways that international law can be used to ensure people's human rights. So whether it be used through a complaint to a special rapporteur by a person arrested for something like sleeping in public that then results in a letter of allegation which can potentially go public, that can really be used to um, raise awareness and influence litigation or policy in certain places, or whether it be used for something like advocacy efforts such as a shadow report to a human rights committee. Um, that then leads to concluding observations that advocates can use to support their arguments or to support policy changes. I think international law is really such an important tool to start to evolve uh, the better upholding of people's universally agreed upon human rights. So I think it completely, my eyes have been opened and it's been a really incredible experience to see how important international law can be. And I really appreciate you tuning in and the opportunity to give you updates about what's been happening here in Geneva this week. And I hope that we can work together more in the future. Thank you.